It's been 11 months since the Uptown 240 in Dillon became a ghost town, but that could be changing soon. Phil Lindman, Crystal, 93 News. First, State Representative Julie McCluskey of Summit says state tax revenue, like local taxes, did not bottom out during COVID. The Joint Budget Committee really set us up for a, a win this year. We made some very hard decisions and budget reductions last spring. And because of that, we have been surprised and pleased that our revenues have come in slightly higher than we anticipated. This has McCluskey eyeing a $20 million firefighting helicopter, the Firehawk. Put them out at the point they start before they even get a name or they get a story in a newspaper. She says one-time funding for that chopper looks promising, along with other one-time buys for transportation and small business grants. We've been reporting on a proposed bill that would ban elected county commissioners from serving on boards of health McCluskey. I have talked with county commissioners in all five of my counties in House District 61, and none of them support this effort. The bill is sponsored by Fort Collins lawmaker after party politics interrupted public health orders in some Front Range counties. Town of Dillon says the Homewood Suites Hotel project downtown will be finished by July 4th, and the Vale Health Building on US 6 should open this coming fall. But what about Uptown 240, the town's gateway project, on hold now for 11 months? Town manager Nathan Johnson. They had uh, a couple issues with some of the lenders that they're working with, so we're trying to come up with a, a reasonable solution that not only protects the town, but uh, gives Uptown 240 uh, what they need to keep that project moving. Johnson hopes to see contractors on site again by end of next month. Up to 4,400 adult mountain lions live in Colorado, and state wildlife officials want humans to make peace with the big cats. As human populations continue to expand, the need to understand and manage wildlife populations within the urban-exurban interface is becoming commonplace. That was from a CPW video series, reporting 25 attacks on people since 1990, including young children and a trail runner. Mountain lions appear to effectively exploit urban areas for needed resources and do well in there. But the future of cougars in these areas will require human acceptance and responsibility for pets, livestock, and living appropriately with wildlife in mind. Lions are rare in Summit, but they do live here, often up north, following deer and smaller prey. Tomorrow is the third annual Safety Summit, a virtual event for skiers and riders founded by avid copper skier Catherine Jeter. You know, we say snow fun, snow safe, and uh, safety starts with you and these people obviously by their participation with us, believe that what we're doing is good work. Guests include longtime ski instructor Nathan Jarvis and Olympic alpine skier Libby Ludlow. Registration is free. Learn more at safeslopesus.com. The latest now on coronavirus and herd immunity. A new report from a German institute shows the U.S. could reach herd immunity through vaccination by December this year, far ahead of Europe. Italy is vaccinating 68,000 people per day, Germany 110,000 people, while the U.S. inoculates 1.6 million people every day, a rate three times faster than Europe. Summit County's latest infection rate per 100,000 is 200, with a seven-day positive test rate of 4.8%. Avalanche danger is moderate at all elevations and aspects today in the Summit Eagle County zone. In sports, the Avalanche got shut out by the Golden Knights last night 3 to nothing. Tonight, the Nuggets play the Trailblazers at 8 on TNT. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency, Summit High Boys and Girls Basketball play Steamboat Springs at home tonight. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.